Hey, hey everybody, it's nice to see you today. Pastor Johnny here bringing you the Word of God. It's my pleasure to bring you the story of David and Goliath today. And here's, here's the problem with that. We know this story so well that sometimes we're tempted to switch off. It's the hardest thing to preach these well-known familiar stories because we think we've heard it all. But I challenge you to please turn again to 1 Samuel chapter 17. Let's read from verse 2 to verse 4. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and they pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on one side and Israel on the other side of the mountain and a valley in between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. In verse 23, it talks about Goliath the champion again for the second time. And then when you read in verses 51 and 52 for the third time, it talks about Goliath the champion. Now the danger is that we are so tempted to just switch off. But before we get to this story, I want you to look at King Saul. King Saul, the Bible says that he was the first king of Israel. He had many personal problems. He was backslidden. He was away from God. And, and he ends up in the last conversation having a, a discussion, a conversation with the witch of Endor. He's caught up in a seance and a clairvoyance and he's literally sitting there in a backslidden condition going to a psychic witch and he really turns to the demonic side. He turns to the dark side. And while this man is distracted, while King Saul is distracted in his walk from God, the Philistines move in the Israel and they pitch in this valley of Elah. Don't let the enemy distract your mind because when the enemy distracts your mind he's distracting your mind from the real battle and, and Saul was distracted and the enemy moves in and that's what happened in the valley of Elah and it's here that the Philistines set up a war camp and it's here that we're introduced to this great big giant called Goliath. Some say he was 10 feet tall. Others say he was 11 feet tall. A big fella. And he's introduced to us and three times in the Bible, the Bible says he's the champion. He's the champion. I mean, he comes out bulging biceps, so massive and strong. It takes another man to carry the shield of this guy. The spear's like a weaver's beam. It's like one of those beams, support beams for a house. This guy is a warrior from his youth and he's cursing the gods of Israel, the armies of Israel and the God of Israel. And he's standing for 40 days and he's cursing and blaspheming God. We read in 1 Samuel chapter 17, he comes out and he says, I'm the champion. Send me one of your champions to come out and fight against me. One against one. Who's your champion? The Bible says in 1 Samuel 17 verse 5, an interesting thing about the armor of Goliath. In the NIV it reads, he had a bronze helmet on his head and he wore a coat of scale armour, like scales. Now who does that represent? The devil, the serpent with that scaly skin. And Goliath is always a picture of the devil. What a champion the devil is. And he is, the Bible says, don't be ignorant of his devices. The devil is too strong a match for us. Champion against champion. Goliath, well, he's intimidating. 
were shaking in her boots. The army of Israel on this side of the mountain are hiding King Saul, which should have been Israel's champion. He was head and shoulders above the rest of his army, the Bible says. At least he would have closed the height difference between Goliath and Saul. He should have been the champion. Where was he hiding in his tent, shaking in his boots? Jonathan, no one was willing to face Goliath that day. Everybody was shaking in their boots. 40 days, every day, he's coming into this valley and every day he's shouting and blasphemy and cursing the God of heaven. Meanwhile, David is out in the fields. His father calls him Jesse. He sends him to the battlefield for his seven brothers to bring bread and cheese. And it's here that the young little ruddy David bounces in and he comes onto this battlefield with bread and cheese. Here you go, fellas. My father, our father brought you some provision. And it was here on the 40th day that David is introduced to Goliath. And he curses. And he swears. And there's blasphemy. And David hears this. Let me say something about David. As this little boy of 17 years of age. He was passionate. For the name of God. You see he loved the Lord. And when you love the Lord. You hate to hear blasphemy. You hate, you hate to hear people using the name of Jesus in a blasphemous way. You can't stand it. There's something that oh, it irritates you. You can't just listen to people just cursing the name of God. And David comes onto this battlefield and he's saying to the men, Is there not a cause? Is there someone here not standing up for the name of God? Why is that not aggravating you? He's cursing the name of God. Why is that not stirring up in your heart? Why is there no holy discontentment? Why is there not a righteous anger welling up within you when you hear people just blaspheming the name of God? Why are you not doing anything? And he runs up the ranks and he says, is there not a cause? In fact, you, you read 1 Samuel 17, no one is even talking about God until David comes onto the battlefield. Saul didn't mention God. Jonathan didn't mention God. Joab didn't mention God. There's no one talking about God. But then David comes on the scene and he says, is there not a cause? And he begins to talk about the God of heaven. And it's interesting when he begins to talk, is there not a cause? All of a sudden, the first giant that David had to face was not Goliath. He had to face the giant of criticism. He if you're going to set your heart to serve God, be prepared to be criticized. Be prepared to be ridiculed. Be prepared to be slandered and brought through all types of accusations and allegations. Be prepared for it. David said, is there not a cause? And the liab, David's own brother, said, why have you come down here? There's naughtiness in your heart. You're full of pride. You're here on the battlefield because you want to be with real men. Get you up to those fields in Judea and you look after those little wee few sheep and play your wee harp and sing your wee songs and write down your wee psalms. But why have you come down onto this battlefield? You are not qualified. You are not equipped. You have not got the right things to be here. And people literally said you're not good enough. David, it's almost comical. He says, I'll fight him. He's cursing the name of God. I'll fight him. And we see David doing this. I love this. This little boy saying, I'll go out and face him. The next thing, this little humble shepherd, he's in the king's tent. And they're also concerned. You can't do this. You need my armor. What did David say when Saul tried to give him his armor? I have not proved this. They thought he's too young. He's too inexperienced. 
They also began to say, you can't do this. And David said, I've got a track record that God's been faithful to me in my past. And God's going to be faithful in my future. If God's delivered me from the lion and the bear, he's going to deliver me from the, the hand of this Philistine. Because God is a covenant keeping God. And if God has kept you brother in the past, he's going to keep you today and your future. If God's met your need financially sister in the past, he's going to do it again in the future. Because he's a covenant keeping God. When God gives you little victories, he's the God of the big victories. Who was it that, that allowed the bear to come to face David? Who was it that allowed the lion to come towards David? God did. Why? Why? So that David would get this confidence in God that when he faces something bigger, he still believes that God is able. God allows trials. God allows difficulties. God allows things into your life so that we can literally have a confidence in God that God's going to bring us through. And they tried to put this armor on him. <laughs> and he said, I have not proved those things. But I've proved the sling. You see, that's how you might feel today. You put a stone in the sling and what do you do? You swing it round and round and round and round. That's what you do with a sling. And your life may be going round in circles. Johnny, I feel my life is going round in circles. Listen, God's about to release you. God's about to use you. You may think that your life is going round in circles like this sling. But David said, I haven't proved your armour, but I've proved this sling. The Bible says that David could throw a stone within a hair's breadth of a target. <laughs> he proved the worship. He proved the harp. He proved the slingshot. He proved faithfulness in God. He proved a covenant keeping God. People look at the sling and they say, that's not much, but he proved it. People look at me and they say, Johnny, Prayer's not much, but I've proved prayer. People look and say, your God's not much, but I've proved God. He's a covenant-keeping God. He's a great God. He's awesome. He keeps his promises. I have proved him in good times and bad times. He's been with me every step of the way. Prayer doesn't look like much, but I've proved it. Faith in Christ may not look much to you, but I've proved it. Worship doesn't look like much to people, but I've proved it. The name of Jesus doesn't look like much. The blood of Jesus, the word of God, it may not look like much to you, but these things, I've proved them. And God's used these things in my life. Hallelujah. The God that delivered me in the past is the God that's going to deliver me in the future. He's a covenant-keeping God. Now, The Bible says that God used this little boy, the most unlikely champion, with a sling and a rock. It didn't look like much. And David wrote in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you're with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now get this. I want you to realize that when he stepped out onto that valley and the shadow of Goliath came across that valley, it must have been like the valley of the shadow of death. But God heard him and God delivered him and set him free. And he's not wasting time worshiping. He's not wasting time writing new psalms as a boy looking after those sheep. 
You might think your humble beginnings, you're wasting time. No, this is preparation for what God is about to do. And I want you to know that this story is not a story about a giant and a little boy. No. It's a story about a big God and a little giant. Because our God is amazing. You see, when David went out to face Goliath, he heard him blaspheming the name of God. I'm telling you, there's something special about the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I love him. I love him. He's my saviour. He's my God. He's forgiven all of my sin. That as far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed my transgressions from me. He's forgiven me of every sin. Do you understand that? And forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ. And when he hears Goliath cursing and blaspheming the name of Jehovah, something welled up in him. I'm not going to let you away with this. It's a sacred name. Do you know, <laughs> under the old covenant, what happened in the Old Testament when someone blasphemed the name of God? Do you know what happened? <laughs> they were stoned to death. They were stoned to death. And David knew this. He takes five stones. He only needed one. But he realized that under that old covenant already, you've broken the covenant. You're going to be stoned to death. And he picked up a stone. <laughs> and he knew that God was with him. He knew. The Bible says in verse 4, the champion Goliath went out. In verse 23, the champion Goliath came up. And in verse 51, the champion Goliath, he fell down dead. Now, I've said all of that to get to this point. Because this is the point I want to get to. You know all of that so far. When I read 1 Samuel 17, I always put myself as David. I always say, I'm David, I'm facing Goliath, I'm facing the devil, and I'm always, that's what we do. I am David against Goliath. The story always ends with a happy ending. The story ends with us killing the giant, and we ride off into the sunset as the hero. I've preached that we're David. Every sermon, I've got maybe six or seven sermons. Every time, we are David. But imagine if we are not David in this story. Well, who are we? I always preach that I'm David. I've always preached that Goliath is the devil in your problems. But if we're honest, we are not David. If we're really honest, giants are fierce. And the chance that we face are so massive, we tend not to be David. We tend to be the army up on the hillside, shaking in our boots. The truth is we're not David. Many times we're afraid. Many times we're with the rest of the army. We're not David. We're fickle soldiers down in the trenches. We're hiding like Saul in our tents, shaking. And if we're honest, many times the giant is killing us. Many times we struggle. Many times with tendencies and we get defeated. Many times we're not killing giants. We can't even get over our own depression. We're not killing giants. Many times we can't get over our own moods. And these swings of moods and attitudes that we can't even get over. We're not killing the devil. We can't even beat the flesh. Never mind the devil. And we come into 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And it gives us a long list of failure after failure after failure after failure. This long list of failures. And in verse 11 it says, Now all these things happened Unto them for our examples. And they're written for our admonition. Upon whom the ends of the earth are to come. Verse 12. Listen. Here is why 
it gives a long list of these failures, verse 12. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Do you think you're a bit of a champion today? <laughs> you're not. You're not David. I'm not David. I want to tell you something. There's a long list of failures and sins in our lives. And when I read this, I always think, well, I'm the winner. Don't look at me as if I'm crazy. We have tendencies that we've all failed. We all think that we're the champion. We all put ourselves in the story of David and the truth is we fail all the time. We always think we're innocent Abel. We never see ourselves as hateful Cain. We always think that we're loyal Abraham. We never see ourselves as greedy Lot. We always see ourselves as good Joseph. We're not the con those conniving brothers, no. We always see ourselves as good, holy Moses up a mountain with God. We never see ourselves as that idolatrous and lustful and rebellious children of Israel and Aaron. We're the three Hebrew children walking in the fire. We're never bound down to other gods. We are literally the disciples that follow Jesus. There's no Pharisee in me. We're all as Job. We're not the looking at other women and other uh, handmaidens according to the book of Job. We never really are honest and if we're honest we're not bringing Goliath down. In fact the Bible says you don't even have the power to take off the head of Goliath. Well who's the champion? Who's the real champion in this story? Because quite often we struggle so much in my mind, I always see myself as fearless David running towards the giant. I never see myself as the one that's shaking in my boots, standing up in the ranks of all the fearful soldiers hiding in their tent. We don't see ourselves as those in the ranks of the soldiers up in the mountain. We think we're always winning, we're always victorious, when the reality is we're not. We're not bringing down giants. You can't even get over pornography. You can't even get over your lust. You're struggling with internet. You can't even get over that. And you think that you're going to bring Goliath down. No, look, the real champion is not you. The real champion is Jesus Christ. He's the champion. We're not really... The one that brought Goliath down. Sometimes we're Saul hiding in the tent. Sometimes I am the Pharisee. Sometimes I am the bad guy. Sometimes I do have attitude issues. Sometimes I lose my temper and want to screw somebody's head off. Sometimes I am a failure. I do have lust. I am a hater. I am a loser. I am a sinner. And all those things I struggle with in the flesh. And if we can't accept that, if we can't admit that, we're missing what the Bible is all about. Jesus is the champion. He's the one that won. The Bible is not about how you are the champion. I know, now please don't misunderstand me. I know who I am in Christ. I have an identity in Jesus Christ. You say to me, well, 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 that's what the devil wanted to do with Adam and Eve in the garden. You are God. No, he is God. I am not the champion. I have a champion and his name is Jesus. Jesus is David. Jesus is my champion. I'm sitting up on the mountain say, quite often shaking in my boots thinking, I'm not going out there. I can't defeat that. I've been up there for 40 days, living with fear, struggling with sin, temperamental with pride, trying to jockey for position. And I think I'm the champion. No. Jesus is the champion. You say to me, but Johnny, what about Romans 8, verse 37? We are more than conquerors 
finish the verse. We are more than conquerors through Christ that loved us. You see, he is the champion. And because he's the champion, yes, I can become a victor. Yes, I can become an overcomer. Yes, I am a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. I can be a winner and a champion. But it's not, I didn't bring the last down. I didn't defeat the devil. Jesus is my champion. And he defeated the scaly one. He defeated the serpent. I want to tell you something. You read these sermons, you know, seven steps to be a champion. Awaken the champion in you. Let me tell you something. We don't always need to be right. We don't always need to be perfect. We fail. We make mistakes. He's the champion. He's perfect. Listen, the war was not finished because of anything that we have done. When Jesus died on the cross, he said it's finished. He accomplished it all. We're on the victory side because Jesus defeated the devil. Do you understand? We're up there and because of Jesus defeated Goliath, he defeated the devil. And that's because we are on the victory side. That's good news. That's good news. Christ won. Hell's defeated. Sin is defeated. Guilt, shame, condemnation is defeated. Jesus won it all for us. Hallelujah. Jesus is greater than David. In fact, when you read Revelation chapter 22, verse 16, it says, Jesus said, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. Listen to this. Jesus said this. I am the root of and the offspring of David. It's not interesting. How can Christ be the root of David and the offspring of David all at the same time? He's the root of David. In other words, Jesus was there before David. <laughs> and yet he's the offspring of David because he was born as the offspring of David. He was the descendant of David. And he goes out to fight Goliath and this type of serpent, the scaly one, he's defeated him. And the Bible says in Genesis 3 verse 15, he crushed the head of the serpent on the cross in the place called Golgotha. He won the victory. He defeated the enemy. And the Bible says he was defeated at the place of the skull, Golgotha, Jesus is my champion. Jesus Christ is my David. And one of the titles of Jesus, he's not called the son of Abraham, the son of Jonah. He's not called the son of Moses. He's called the son of David. Hallelujah. He's the Messiah King. And I don't care what size Goliath is. Let's make him 11 feet. Standing now, taunting, taunting. The devil taunts us, doesn't he? He he hammers us, he condemns us. Jesus' blood doesn't work. I still own you. You're not free. I'm still the theme of your life. You'll never break this depression. You'll never get over this, this addiction. Goliath has a sermon if you listen to him and that's what he'll preach. You'll always be condemned. You'll never beat me. Who can stand against me? And the people of God believe it. The people of God start to take it in. We're no match for this guy. It's true. It's true. He's the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. But my champion has already defeated the devil. And that means I am a victor also in Christ because of what David, my champion, has done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is the real hero, not you. Jesus won the battle, not you. Jesus defeated the devil, not you. And because of that one victory... We can become champions and we, be, we can become winners and we can stand as victors. Hallelujah. And here's what the Bible says. As soon as David hit Goliath, that stone hit him on the head and he fell down and he gets the sword of Goliath and he cuts off his head. 
What does the Bible say? When that happened, the Bible says in 1 Samuel 17, verse 53, that when they saw that, all the men of Israel shouted because of the victory of their champion, David. I'm telling you, Christian, how long have you been silent? It's time for you to lift up your voice again and worship God and find prayer again. And, and listen, you've been too long silent. You've been too terrified at the tyranny of sin or this grip on you, this addiction, this giant that's over your life. And you've been quiet and you've been subdued for too long. Jesus defeated them all. Find your voice again. Worship again. Stop being fearful. You're up on the mountain of failure. You're up on your grip with fear. You're thinking, I'm going to serve the Philistines for the rest of my life. I haven't got a future. Listen to me. Jesus defeated the devil so that you've got freedom. You've, you can break this addiction because Jesus defeated the devil on the cross. And made a show of him openly. Hallelujah. Jesus going to the cross and David ran to meet Goliath and Jesus is carrying two sticks going to the cross and the Bible says you've come to me. Am I a dead, a dead dog that you come to me with stuffs? I can see Jesus going to the cross carrying this piece of wood and all hell laughing. Is that it? We've got him now. What's he going to do with these pieces of wood? Am I a dog that you're coming to me with a piece of wood? And the people laughed at him. I want to tell you something. Jesus won the battle. Jesus won the battle. The devil is defeated. Every curse, every shame, every evil and temptation, every addiction, lust, everything... Romans 5 or 6, for when we were yet without Christ, without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Verse 52 says, they pursue the Philistines through the valley right up to the gates of Akron. Now the word for Akron means total eradication, total destruction. Another translation reads, uh, the bodies lay in the streets all the way to the gates of Akron. The devil's defeated. You may feel like you're beaten down and you've lost your identity and you're terrified and you're living with this guilt and that shame. I want to set you free by the word of God. You are free in Jesus Christ. The powers of sin and the devil, it's been total eradication, a total plunder. They're they shouted, they pursued, they won, they plundered, they fulfilled the promises of God in their lives. And just a short time before that, they were all fearful. But everything changed when David won the victory. You have got to realize who you are in Christ. But he is the champion. Jesus is the real champion. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says that David cut off his head. <laughs> Just when you think that the devil could come back again at you, he's defeated forever. The Bible says uh, that we have eternal life and forgiveness of sins and redemption of our soul. The Bible says that when the victory was won, they lifted up their voice and they all shouted. I want to tell you something. When David says, goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I have two bodyguards everywhere I go. Goodness and mercy. No matter where I go, no matter what I've been through in my past, goodness and mercy. I don't have judgment and wrath. I don't have shame and rejection. I don't have condemnation and guilt. I've got goodness and mercy. And so do you, Christian. It's God's bodyguards. They go with you everywhere you go. He has you in his hand. But I want to point you to the real champion today. It's Jesus. 
And because he's the champion, you can become a champion in Christ. You can defeat the devil. You can because the powers of hell have got nothing on you because of what Jesus did. And, and they, they beat the other army. Do you understand? When David beat Goliath, the Israelites pursued the Philistines and they were defeated because of that first victory that Jesus did over the devil, which David did over Goliath. We are victors. The real champion is not you. It is the Lord Jesus Christ. I love him with all of my heart today. Do you? Do you love him? If you want to love him, if you want to serve him, if you want to repent of your sin today, call on the name of the Lord. Repent of sin. Ask Jesus to wash you in his precious blood. Ask him to forgive you of every sin. Ask him to come inside your heart to live. Accept the free gift of God. Believe that Jesus died and rose again. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You will be saved. And I pray that God will set you free today when you listen to this message. You'll never break the addiction, but Jesus has won the victory so that you can break every addiction through his power, through his glory. And may God bless his word to your hearts today. Thank you so much for listening. I love you in Jesus' name. Let me pray. Father, I ask your blessing over every person here today. Help us not to be distracted so that the enemy can move in when we're being distracted with something. Help us to always have our eyes on you. Help us to take a stand at blasphemy. Help us, Lord, to get over the giant of criticism. And Lord, even when it's from our own family, help us to still look and to be zealous and passionate for the name of God. Lord, you are my champion. You fight for me. You stand in my corner. Lord, I'm in Team Jesus today. Thank you, God, that you help me face every Goliath in my life and Lord because you won the victory I can pursue I can become a champion because you're my champion so Father I give you all the glory bless the word encourage the people of God in Jesus name I ask it Amen Amen May the Lord bless his word to your hearts today keep looking to Jesus the author and the finisher of your faith, the pioneer of your faith. Give him glory today. Love you in Jesus' name. Make contact with us if you need prayer. We want to pray for you and may the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.